Now, this was very difficult. I had not been going to the Kingdom Hall ever since. Um, her father was an elder, and we were, now we were both Christians. Um, and so, and her father was an elder. <laughs> and uh, we kind of kept things secret for a little bit. And um, I told my, I, you know, my, my father still thought I was going to the Kingdom Hall because I was living with my father and with my aunt at the time. And uh, he, we were going to different congregations for a while now anyways. Um, so he thought I was still going to the meetings, you know. Um, but what I was actually doing uh, was leaving the house an hour earlier, waiting on the corner of the street and waiting for a Christian to pick me up to go to church. And so <laughs> I was going to church for, for a while, and uh, my, my father found out um, that I was going to church. I had a church bulletin in my, in my, in my Bible, and my, my aunt went to, inside my room to, to look for something, and uh, she found that. And so she showed it to my father, she showed it to my other aunts, and then she showed it to my girlfriend's father. Yeah. <laughs> so he wants to talk to me, and uh, we, we end up going talking somewhere. He's like, he shows me, the, you know, they, they photocopied and everything so they can show it to the elders. You know, it was a big deal. Um, and so they, he showed me the photocopy. He's like, you see, you know, it, showed, it says that you went to a church, and, uh, you know, have you really been going to a church? And I'm like, yeah, I have been. And he's like, why are you doing that? You know, you can be this fellowship for that. You know, that's apostasy and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? It's just there, there are questions that I had for the elders, and none of them could answer them. And so I went looking for uh, answers elsewhere, and I found them. And he's like, you really think you can find answers other than in Jehovah's organization? And I'm like, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he didn't take that very well. And, he's, and he, he started... Uh, Debating with me, um, you know, whether Jesus is God or not. And I started asking him, you know, I, just simple questions. You know, my, my, my theology was still developing. I, I just knew with, with what the scriptures were saying. And I had the conviction, the boldness in my heart to proclaim it. And I'm like, well, the scripture says this, this, and that. And, and, and even he had a hard, uh, hard time answering the objections I was bringing. Um, but in the spirit of humility, I was always like, you know what? Uh, I... I, I I care about you, and I care about your daughter, and I care about your family, and uh, I know that I know what's going to come next. Um, but just know that I, I'm doing all this out of loyalty for Jehovah God. And then he's like, "Well, you, you got that right. That you, there are going to be consequences." And uh, he told me that I can't see his daughter anymore, and uh, he told me that he's going to talk to my elders, and so he did. And I talked to an elder uh, from my congregation who just wanted to clear things up first. It wasn't a judicial meeting or anything. He just wanted, it's a dear elder that was a good friend of mine. And uh, he talked to me and we, you know, I went to the Kingdom Hall and I, and I brought an NIV study Bible with me. <laughs> so it wasn't the, the new world that I brought. And so when he saw that I brought an NIV study Bible, he was looking at it. He was like, huh, so why'd you bring this? And I'm like, oh, it's the Bible I like using now. And he's like, oh, that's interesting. And so he knew off the bat something was wrong. And so he asked me if I've been going to a church. He asked me about uh, the videos on YouTube, whether, you know, whether I've been speaking out against the organization. I was honest with him and said, you know what, I have been. And uh, he asked me if I believed that the Jehovah Witnesses were the truth. And I'm like, they're, they're not. And he's like, then what's the truth? And I'm like, it's not what, it's who. It's Jesus. <laughs> and I started quoting to him. Uh, you know, John 14, 6, and he's like, uh, as soon as I'm in the middle of the verse, uh, he's like, um, well, we're not going to have this. We're not going to have you lecture me, and we're not going to have you speak against the organization, and so something needs to be done. And then he looked at me, sarcastically said, you know, you can start your own religion now. And I said, no, I'm not Charles Taze Russell. So I walked out of there with a high head, and I was like, you know what? I just did, I did the right thing, and uh, I wrote my letter of disassociation that, that night. And uh, the next Sunday, I handed it over to the congregation, and uh, it, it wasn't easy. It really wasn't easy, and I, and I prayed for the Holy Spirit's guidance in writing that letter. Uh, I made it short and sweet, but uh, with, with, with power and with conviction. Um, I said, in my, in my letter, it said that, uh, you know, brothers and sisters of uh, the, the congregation, uh, I've been prayfully considering this for a long time now, and I just want to say that I'm sorry for ever being part of a false organization and a false prophet. And I say I have now given my life over to our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have been born again, and I, and I gave my reasons as to why I no, longer, I no longer wish to be known as a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, I, I had that letter read. I read it to the elders that day at, at the, my first judicial committee meeting. 
and uh, my father was there. Now, this was very uh, bittersweet for me because I was glad that I was leaving, but I was very, very hurt by the fact that my father was now crushed. Uh, my, like I, I mentioned earlier, that my sister had left the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, um, prior to that, um, many years ago, and, and I've only seen my father cry two times, and that was the first time that I saw him cry was in, when my sister was in fellowship. And I remember telling my parents, I'm never going to make you guys go through that. I'll never leave Jehovah. I'll, I'll always be faithful. And so I knew, I knew that it was going to hurt him. It was going to affect him. Um, you know, as I, as I read my letter and I gave it over to them and, and, and I said, you know, this is it. Uh, you know, I looked over to my father and he just started, um, broke, break, broke down in tears. And, uh, you know, you never want to cause your father to be disappointed. You never want to make him disappointed. You never want to be the object of... Uh, of his disdain or anything, and uh, it, it, it hurt me, and that cut really deep, seeing my father uh, break down like that. You know, he's, a, he's a tough guy, he never breaks down, he's always really strong and uh, spiritual guy, um, and to see him just break down and weep was, was not easy. Um, I didn't even see him cry like during the divorce, during that whole process, I never saw him cry or anything like that, and so to know that I cut him so deep that, that, that it, it caused that reaction from him. He thought he's losing his son, he's losing his son's salvation, you know, you know, I understand where he was coming from. And uh, what really got me angry, though, was looking at the elders, and they were just looking at him. No hug, no encouragement, nothing. And so I pray for my father's salvation every day. Um, unfortunately, the very next day that I disassociated myself, uh, that was April 15th, April 6th, um, the December 15th. Um, December 16th, when I left, uh, when, I, when, I, when I was home, um, that night, my, my father and my uh, aunt decided to kick me out on the streets, and I was on the streets for a month, and uh, in the middle of December in Connecticut weather, so that was very difficult, uh, but God was merciful, and God provided, and the church that I was uh, attending were, were so kind to uh, bring me into their home and, uh, you know, bless me and uh, give me material needs, and uh, my mother came back from North Carolina, and uh, she, because we have DCF involved, and so she came back, and uh, um, she, uh, I moved in with her into an apartment in Hartford, and so it, it, it has been a really difficult transition. And uh, when my girlfriend also, um, my girlfriend at the time, she also disassociated herself about a week after I did. And so, and she did it while her circuit overseer was visiting. <laughs> <laughs> And so she wrote her letter, and uh, her, her father, unfortunately, lost his privileges of elder. And um, so now we had two fathers and two families extremely upset at, at, at us, you know. They thought we were trying to ruin their lives. We were, we were causing divisions in the congregation, and uh, we were apostates and um, every other thing that you can imagine. But God has been so faithful, brothers and sisters. He has been so faithful. One of the things that I was thinking about when before I became a Christian while I was down south of North Carolina, uh, one of the things that really got me thinking about grace was a scripture in Romans 4 that really just got me thinking about grace and really, really, you know, just started to uh, bring me to the fact that I need, to, I need salvation and I need grace. It's in Romans chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, where, where Paul quotes from the Old Testament. He says, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose, name, or whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord Jehovah will not count his sin. And I was like, I want to be that man of righteousness. I want to be that man of God whom Jehovah does not see my sin, but instead he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That was what I wanted in my life. I wanted to experience new birth. I wanted to experience the righteousness, not of my own, but that of the Son of God. And so the moment I was born again, I received it. And it's interesting because when you're born again, it's not just a one-time deal. It isn't just a one-time moment. It's something that lasts an eternity. Amen. You're not just born again for one moment. You're born again forever. Amen. And you're a new person in Christ, and the Holy Spirit now has his hand upon you, and he begins to sanctify you, conform you to the image of, his, of the Son of God. And so the sanctification process in my life and, and through this transition of, of being a Jehovah's Witness, uh, it, it, just, it just molded me so much. And uh, 
God's hand was upon my life and upon uh, my, my girlfriend's life. Uh, I, I was baptized as a Christian in uh, April 29, 2009. And so I give glory to God for that because now I'm not just, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I'm a witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My girlfriend was also baptized later that summer. And uh, we are now both faithfully serving the Lord God in our local communities, and uh, we have our own ministries. I have my ministry on YouTube and on the internet, obviously. Uh, Real Truth Ministries, you can find that on YouTube, and you can find my blog site. Um, and God's just been so faithful. And in, in recent times, you know, God has opened my eyes not just to reach my former brethren and the Jehovah's Witnesses, but also reach Mormons and um, Muslims and people of all faiths and cults. Because it's not just Jehovah's Witnesses who need salvation. It isn't just those in the cults who need salvation. It's everyone. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all those who believe. And so we need to share the gospel of all people, of all faiths. And just God's been pressing this on my heart. And uh, the Lord has also pressed it on my heart to also uh, uh, pursue a full-time ministry as a pastor. And so next year I'll be going to Moody Bible Institute uh, to pursue a full-time ministry. We're so blessed, brothers and sisters. We're so blessed. Because God delivered us. If you, whether you came from a Mormon background, a Christian background, or a Jehovah Witness background, God delivered us from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of his beloved son so that we may now see the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we have this new salvation in Jesus promised to us. One of the most incredible things that, that the gospel promises is peace with God, reconciliations. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained faith, um, access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And guess what? And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Grace is what we stand on. It is where we need to be placed, and it is what the Jehovah's Witnesses need. And so I praise God that he took me out of the watchtower. Um, so far, I'm the only Christian in my family. Uh, we have, you know, two generations of Jehovah Witnesses in the family. Uh, but slowly but surely, God is opening the eyes of, of uh, my family members and my friends who were Jehovah's Witnesses. I told you earlier uh, that in third grade, I had converted my best friend to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, this year, in April, he started talking to me again. And the day I invited him over to my house, and he came over to my home, and uh, um, we had a nice discussion, and I had a little surprise for him. I brought him to church. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little nervous, um, but that day he gave his life to the Lord. So God is powerful, he is sovereign, and he is in control of everything. And so we can put our faith in him. We can put our faith in the sovereign Lord, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He is the glory of God. And by him we now stand in his grace. And so we give glory to God. I just want to pray for you guys because, you know, it's just been such an amazing time we've been having here. And so let us bow our heads in prayer real quickly. Our Father God, Jehovah, we thank you so much for this incredible evening and for this weekend of uh, real spiritual nourishment, spiritual nourishment that comes from the word of God, built up to the fellowship of the body of believers. And so, Lord God, we give you glory, we give you thanks, Lord. I pray that all of our friends and families who are still lost in the false religions and the Jehovah Witnesses and any of the cults, Lord, we pray for their salvation, for their souls. We pray that they may come to know eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so, Father God, we know that you are worthy of our praise and glory. And we just pray that, you know, you just may continue to bless us with all spiritual blessings that is placed in Jesus Christ. And so, Father God, we praise you. We give you glory. Who are we, Lord, that you shouldn't be mindful of us, but yet you saved us and delivered us into your son's kingdom. And so we give you glory and thanks. And we trust you because we know you are true. And we are in him who is true, even in your son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. It is in his name, to him every knee shall bow. And it is in his name that we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen.